everybody, welcome back to the Journey Channel. I'm Chelsea J, and we are gonna focus on success. We are in the image of Christ that we are him, that we have. As we are on this defense track, one of the strategies that the enemy likes to present is he likes to twist our view on success, where he manipulates us to think that success is getting to the top, that success is insta-famous, that if we don't have what they have, then we're not successful, that if we don't have a certain level of wealth, that we don't have certain words next to our name in our job, if we don't have a certain job status, if we don't have certain careers, if that we don't have a master's degree, or if we're not valedictorian, that therefore we're not successful. The enemy likes to keep us performance driven that our approval and our focus is on man instead of our approval and focus is on God. He likes to push this statement on us that you can't just do the best, that you have to be the best, that you have to be the one always on top, the official best. There's nothing wrong with being valedictorian or the top level of the class. The issue is that if you put your direction towards perfection, it will lead to an affection of who God originally created you to be. You have to live as you were created to live with confidence that you did your best. He utilizes wealth, he utilizes status, he utilizes the fame, the media. He utilizes all that to keep you away from who and what God called you to do and be on this earth. Success is the lenses through which we see life through, not a destination. Success is living out our best, knowing that we did our best and that we are believing we are God's best version of ourselves. So the key to fights is knowing who we are, understanding our skills. Ask these questions to yourself, what you love to do, what you don't love to do. Learn yourself. We have to live a way that is pleasing to God, which is doing our best with his best, which is ourselves. Our success should be defined in a way that God directed it. The Bible says in Jeremiah 20 and 11 that God has a plan for you to prosper you, to give you a good hope and a future. And you know, in different translations also, it uses the word success to give you good success. And success is so crucial to God that he wants to give you the desires of your heart, that he wants to bless you. He wants to give you an abundant life. You have to live freely and uniquely the way God created us to live. That we have to know our temperament, we have to know our skills, we have to know our talents, our gifts, and sometimes we don't know. And sometimes we're like, I don't know what to do in this world, I don't know what God wants me to do. And that does take time to really spend time with him, that he will show you. I mean, it's in the word that he wants to give us the desires of our hearts, that he has plans for us. He's going to show us if we take the time to, to reach out and to ask. The Bible says, ask and the door will be open, ask and it will be given unto you. We gotta ask these questions and stand firm in them. And then we have to begin to learn more about who we are. Sometimes we just expect God to just tell us these answers, but we don't take the time to learn and understand and, 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 and seek it for ourselves. One of the things you can do to evaluate your skill sets is just figure out what you do often. What is like you normally do and what are you normally good at? Think of, write down some things that you are passionate about, things that you you want to help people about. You get excited to share to others. Think about things that you would love to do. Like, this is a time to just dream big dreams. The Bible talks about abundance and overflow. It talks about wealth. It talks about riches. That although it's not, um, you know, financial wealth isn't the end all and of all, but if we don't have the spiritual wealth, we're going to be relying completely on financial wealth that God is not gonna give us things that we cannot handle. So if we cannot handle the financial wealth and, and, and then we push down the spiritual wealth, he won't be able to give that to us until we know how to handle both. So we have to be able to be good stewards of the things that we currently have so that God can give us more. Other things that the enemy loves to fight us with is that he likes to infiltrate the word can't into our vocabulary. He likes to spill this can't, 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 I can't do this, I can't work, I can't go to college, I can't overcome my sin, I can't stop drinking, I can't stop watching pornography, I can't stop listening to this, I can't stop watching this, I can't get better grades, I can't lose weight, I can't, I can't, I can't. He likes to throw those in to limit you and stop you from what you truly can do. God has given you every resource which is in the word of God. He has given you the Holy Spirit 
to, to that is within you when you choose Christ, Holy Spirit gives you the power to overcome everything. Whenever I feel like I can't do something, I say greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. A lot of times where we try to rely on our own strength to handle this, or handle certain things in our lives, we try to rely and that we will fall short because God wants to do this with us, that we need his strength. We need his power to do all that we want to do. The Bible says in Ephesians 3, 20, that God would do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine or think. But we have to tap into the word of God. We have to tap into the Holy Spirit and we have to allow the Holy Spirit to do the work in us, through us, so we will do the impossible.